Hi everyone, I'm Sammy, and today we're here to talk about stress, how our bodies respond to it, and why that matters. So what is stress exactly? Well, scientifically speaking, stress is the relationship between your body and a situation that you appraise as unmanageable or threatening. Whether you have a stress response, like a racing heart or sweaty palms, depends on your appraisal of the situation or stressor. In other words, we're not all stressed by the same things. Both your genes and life experiences impact how you perceive stressful events. As individuals, we're not even stressed by the same things day to day. Some days we have a short fuse and little things can cause stress. Other days we're resilient and calm in the eye of the storm. While exercise is itself a stressor in the short term, moderate exercise and good sleep boost our stress resilience so that we don't appraise minor situations as stressful. On the other hand, too much exercise can lead to fatigue and stress, so finding your balance is key. Stressors can be positive, like a motivating work deadline, or they can be negative, like an unreasonable work deadline or balancing remote work while homeschooling your kids, which I'm sure a few of you can relate to. Whether we're aware of it or not, each time we're faced with a stressor, our bodies undergo physical and mental changes in an attempt to maintain our balance. When you appraise a situation as a stressor, your sympathetic nervous system releases stress hormones, like adrenaline and cortisol, to prepare you for a fight or flight response. This process can cause all sorts of changes in your body, some of which can be measured with wearables, biometrics like heart rate variability, or HRV, and electrodermal activity, or EDA, which is measured with a new sensor on Fitbit Sense. These metrics can help us identify when you might be stressed and not even realize it, and let us take action to manage that stress preventing negative health impacts down the line. Fitbit's new stress management score utilizes some of these metrics to provide users with a daily calculation of their physical stress level based on three components. First, exertion balance, which gauges the impact of activity like exercise and steps. Second, responsiveness, which assesses your fight or flight response through metrics like heart rate, HRV, and EDA. And last, sleep patterns, which include metrics that measure the quality and quantity of sleep. This score was designed in part to help people plan their day. For example, if you receive a high score, which is a good thing, it means that your body is showing few signs of physical stress. So you may consider taking on a new project or doing some exercise. If your score is low, which is not ideal, it means that your body is showing signs of stress. So maybe you wanna give yourself a break, go to bed early tonight or do a meditation. Over time, the score can also reveal connections between your stress level and key health metrics like activity and sleep. We all experience challenges from time to time and a burst of adrenaline can give us that extra energy that we need to help us overcome those challenges. The resulting stress responses are usually short-lived or acute and are necessary for our survival. But when they become chronic over time, they can lead to many negative health outcomes, including headaches, cardiac disease, sleeping problems, and obesity. While the first step in preventing these negative health outcomes is identifying when your body is under stress, measuring your body's response to stress is only part of the situation. Now I'll turn it over to Fitbit's research algorithm scientist, Belen Lafon, to talk more about stress management. Thanks, Sammy. Being mindful means not only understanding the role stress plays on our health, but actively taking steps to better manage it. One tool to help you manage stress is through meditation. Meditation is a practice where you use a technique to train attention or awareness in order to achieve an emotional calm and a mentally clear state. It has been shown to ease symptoms of anxiety and depression and may even reduce blood pressure. As with all skills, meditation is a learned habit that's most effective when practiced consistently. But how is your body responding to meditation? With the new EDA sensor and Fitbit Sense, we are able to measure EDA activity, which may indicate your body's response to stress. Let me tell you how the sensor works. Because sweat is really good at conducting electricity, the more sweat you have, the easier the electrical current will flow from one of the sense electrodes to the other, allowing us to measure your skin conductance something also known as your EDA response. EDA response might sound very technical, but it's just a fancy way of saying sweat. When your sympathetic nervous system is activated, something also known as your fight or flight response, it can increase the sweat level in your palms. 
This sweat changes come in waves, waves that are so small, you might not even feel them, but they can be tracked by the new EDA sensor in Fitbit Sense. Each of these sweat waves is what we call an EDA response. And as Sami mentioned before, the body responds in many different ways to stress, and an increased number of EDA responses is just one of them. This new sensor measures your EDA responses, which you can see on your Sense device through the EDA Scan app. The app also takes you through a series of meditations, either short and guided sessions directly on device, or longer guided meditations up to 60 minutes through the Fitbit app. You should expect fewer EDA responses as you get calmer when you meditate. To start an EDA scan session, you simply place your palm on the face of the watch, breathe, and keep still. Um, I'm gonna do a quick meditation so you can see how it works. Once it ends, you can see both on device and in the Fitbit app how your body responded. You can use the sessions as a way to practice meditation anytime. And in the mobile app, you'll also be able to see a history of your sessions alongside the mental stress you've logged. So you can see how your body responds to different stressors over time. Can all this really make a difference in your health? Dr. Helen Wang, Assistant Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the University of California, San Francisco, is here to take us through the benefits of meditation on your physical and emotional health. I'm Dr. Helen Wang, and I'm trained as a clinical psychologist and a neuroscientist, and I study meditation from a neuroscientific point of view. And I've also practiced meditation myself for about 15 years and have also taught um, clients in psychotherapy as well as students. My role at UCSF is an assistant professor in psychiatry, and I'm researching meditation from a neuroscientific perspective where we're actually using machine learning or artificial intelligence to read the brain signals of people when they're meditating. So we're really trying to open, open up the black box of meditation and learn to read the mind of people meditating. Meditation is exercises for your mind. So if you can think about it as um, like exercising for your body, what do you need? You need a consistent practice. But what we find is that these mental capacities can be cultivated and strengthened just like physical ones can. So some of the most common findings with uh, meditation practice are that it helps to reduce stress, uh, symptoms of anxiety and depression, and can also help with uh, sleep issues and insomnia. So there are both emotional and physical benefits to meditation. And what people don't fully realize that is that our emotions are embedded in our bodies. So our stress response is deeply tied to what's going on in our body. Stress activates our immune system. And if it's chronic stress, um, that can cause problems with the immune system. So um, people have found benefits in terms of recovering from cancer and also at the rate of how much you get a cold or how quickly you recover from a cold. For your own personal meditation practice, I first suggest finding something you really enjoy meditating with, something that does seem to make you feel more calm. And then I also suggest practicing with something that is less fun to practice with, and this is um, to build resilience. So one of the really transformative parts of meditation is that if you practice with something that's difficult, maybe a painful sensation in your body or your mind, a painful memory, and you learn a more non-judgmental, kind way to approach it, that will help us learn new ways of approaching really difficult things in our lives. Imagine if we could all be more open and non-judgmental in, in the most difficult times in our lives, how, how that can help us navigate in a more uh, graceful way. Fitbit has some introductory exercises for self-compassion and also loving kindness towards yourself and others. And sometimes we wanna push ourselves so hard that we use um, a judgmental tone of voice, right? Self-compassion, loving kindness can help counteract that where you, you shift uh, the tone in which you're talking to yourself and you're relating to yourself 
And by being gentle and firm at the same time, you can still work towards your goals in a more sustainable way. I encourage people to try all of them and see what resonates with you. See what gets you engaged and excited and um, where you feel a more vital sense in your body. You can kind of sense that, right? Try different things out, see what works for you. Um, and also to translate it into your daily life. So I really love um, taking care of plants and I really love drinking coffee. So I bring a mindful attention to those activities. I kind of slow myself down, really take in all the sensory components and it brings a lot of joy into my life. Oftentimes people feel like they don't have time to meditate. And I really understand that because we're all very busy. So even five minutes a day, building something consistent into your life can be beneficial. People also commonly think that they can't meditate when their minds start to wander. And so um, that is a false impression. Um, by, by recognizing that your mind is wandering, you're actually building meta awareness or awareness of your own mind. So if you mind wander, it's a good thing because it's giving you uh, an opportunity to practice bringing your mind back.